आज इस वीडियो में हम ए के यू ई बी मे एग्जामिनेशन टू थाउजेंड सिक्सटीन का पेपर वन सॉल्व करेंगे दैट इज फ्राम आर क्लास टेन फिजिक्स सो चलिए क्वेश्चन नंबर वन की तरफ मूव करते हैं सो हेयर वी हैव आर क्वेश्चन नंबर वन एंड दिस क्वेश्चन इज फ्राम आर चैप्टर नंबर टेन सिंपल हारमोनिक मोशन एंड वेव्स so in this question if the frequency of the waves is doubled then what will be the effect on period of the wave so we know that frequency is a equals to the reciprocal of the time period and time period is equals to 1 over f so the relation between the time period and the frequency of the wave is they are inversely proportional to each other so if we double the frequency then the time period will become half of the the half from the previous one so the correct option for this question is option b next we have question number 2 if the velocity of the wave is 340 meters per second and its frequency is 200 hertz so we have velocity that is 340 and we have frequency that is 200 and we have to find the wavelength of this sound wave so by using the wave equation v is equals to lambda f so lambda will be equals to velocity over frequency the value of uh, velocity is 340 while the frequency is 200 so we will cancel out this uh, with the uh, the zeros and 34 divided by 20 that will be equal to 1.7 meters so we have the correct answer that is option b 1.7 meters so let's move to question number 3 and in this question what we have this is our question 3 from our chapter number 11 sound when sound travels through air the particles of the air will vibrate so we have to define uh, state the direction of particles of the air when sound wave is passing through it so we know that the nature of the sound is longitudinal sound is a longitudinal wave and what is meant by longitudinal wave that this is if this is the direction of wave and particles of the medium moves along the direction of wave so this means this type of wave is a longitudinal wave so the correct option is along the direction of wave propagation so option b we have is the correct answer uh, question number 4 again we have from the same chapter chapter number 11 sound a sound wave is a mechanical wave we call sound wave is a type of mechanical wave and what is meant by mechanical wave the wave that requires medium for their propagation this means that without medium electromagnetic uh, sorry without medium mechanical waves cannot propagate through any uh, place or from one point to another point so what we have uh, in the correct option that a medium is required for a sound wave to transport energy so this is our correct answer that is option c next come to question number 5 that is from our chapter number 12 if an object is placed at 8 cm in front of a concave mirror so this is the position of the object that is 8 cm and we have a concave mirror that is a converging mirror and the focal length of the mirror is given as 4 cm so we have to find the location of the image so by applying the lens formula or mirror formula 1 over f equals to 1 over p plus 1 over q so for the measurement of q we know that q will be equal to 1 over f minus 1 over p so p minus f will be equals to fp so finally we will get p minus f over pf so the value of p is 8 and the focal length is 4 
So eight minus four over eight multiplied by four. So four over thirty six. So thirty six over four will be equal to. So the for value of Q will become thirty six over four. Sorry, thirty two over four. So. So the value of Q will become eight centimeter. So this is a correct answer. That is option C. Okay. So let's come to question number six, and here we have our question number six. So in this question, where will an image be formed if the magnification is one? What is meant by magnification one? So in this question, we have Uh, two hands or two things that will lead to our correct answer. One is the position of object. So position of object we have is at two f, and magnification means that uh, image will be equal to object. When size of image and the size of object are equal, this means that magnification is equal to one. And whenever an object is placed at two f, this is obvious that it will form an image at two f that is real and inverted. And the distance from the lens and the size of that image will be equal to the object. So we have a correct answer that the image will be formed at two f. It will be equal to that object, and it will be the equal distance as it is from the as it is the object. So this was our question from chapter thirteen. Let's come to question. Uh, sorry, chapter twelve. So next we have question number seven, and this question is also from our chapter number twelve, geometrical optics. Okay, so this question is from our chapter number twelve, geometrical optics, and in this diagram, an incident ray is passing from ray medium into the dense medium, and this is this will be our incident ray, while this will become our refracted ray, and this. perpendicular line to the medium is our normal so we have to find the uh, or we have to measure the refractive index or the expression for the refractive index in that case we know that the sine of i the ratio of sine of i to the sine of r is equal to refractive index So we know that this angle is angle I, and this is the angle R. So I will become forty-eight, and R will be thirty. So the so the expression for refractive index will be sine forty-eight over sine thirty. So correct option we have is option A. Okay, so let's move to question number eight, and we have this question from our chapter number twelve, geometrical optics. So, an eye and a camera are similar in function, and the image formed by those two optical devices is of same nature. So, the camera and eye. the both are the devices that works on the same principles and the image formed by both of these devices are same so image formed by eye and camera is real and inverted as well as small in size so these are the real characteristics of the image formed by our human eye and the camera so the correct option we have is option d real inverted and smaller in size let's come to question number 9 and this question number 9 will be from our next chapter that is chapter number 13 electrostatics so in this question we have our definition of force acting per unit charge we know that the force acting per unit charge charge is known as electric 
field intensity. So this is the simple question in which definition is asked. So option D, we will have the correct answer, electric field intensity. Next question number for 10. This is from the same chapter, electrostatics. When three capacitors of different capacitance that are connected in the parallel combination, then what will be the total, total capacitance of the combination? So we know that the formula for the parallel combination of capacitance is equal to C1 plus C2 plus C3. So whenever in parallel combination, we add two or more than two capacitance, the total capacitance will be greater than the individual capacitance. Where jo paas total answer pe C ka, wo C1, C2 or C3 ki value in tino se hamara answer bada hoga. So option B, that is the correct answer for this question. So quickly, let's move to another question. We have question number 11 and question number 12. So in this question number 11, uh, if the electric current through the resistor is 2 ampere, we have electric current 2 ampere with a potential difference of 60 volt. So we have voltage and we have current then the power dissipated in the resistance will be. So we know that power uh, in, in the resistance or electric power can be given uh, give by this formula P equals VI. So the voltage is six volts and the current is to ampere. So we will get 12 watts power. So correct answer for this question we have is option D. Okay, so let's come to question number 12. And in question number 12, what we have is, it is from our chapter number 14, current and electricity. In the given diagram, 100 watt bulb is operated with 220 volt source. We have to find the current passing through that bulb. So let's apply the same formula as we have applied in the previous question, P is equals to VI. So the current will be equals to power over voltage. The power of the bulb is 100 watt and the current voltage is 220 volt. So the expression for the current will be equals to 100 over 220. So we have correct option that is option C for this question number 12. Okay, so next we have is question number 13. And this question is from our chapter number 15. Electromagnetism. The which of the following device is shown in the diagram at position three. And as we can see that this is uh, a soft iron core and we have uh, four terminals in which this is one coil, this is another coil. So in short, we are given with a diagram or the figure in which we have a transformer connected in this. So transformer is a device that is used to increase or decrease the alternating voltage. And this is the device that is connected with almost every uh, electrical instrument or device. Correct option we have got is option D. So quickly let's move to question number 14 and 15. In question number 15, sorry, question number 14. This is our question from chapter 15, electromagnetism, the working principle of an AC generator. We have to identify the working principle that what is the main process that is occurring in AC generator. So we know that the main principle in this AC generator is electromagnetic induction. Next, uh, let's come to question number 15. And this is a question from the same chapter, electromagnetism. If a piece of copper wire is placed perpendicular to the magnetic field and the current in the wire increases. So let's say we have two poles of the magnet through which magnetic field lines are passing in that direction. 
and we have our conductor that is placed perpendicular to the direction of magnetic field and this is the direction of current through it so if the current through that conductor is increased so what will be the effect on the force applied on that conductor so we know that the factors affecting this force are v i and l where v is the magnetic field i the amount of current and l is the length of conductor so by increasing the amount of current through the conductor the force will increase so the correct option for this question number 15 we have is option a that is the force will increase so let's come to question number 16 and in 16 this is from the same chapter chapter number 15 electromagnetism in the given figure which of the following combination correctly describes the fleming's left hand rule so we have got this fleming's left hand rule and we know that this is the rule that is used to de describe the direction of force so in this uh, rule we have these three fingers stretched perpendicular to each other in which this is our forefinger and this is our middle finger and they are, they are perpendicular to each other. Similarly, the thumb and their index finger are perpendicular. Similarly, thumb and the middle finger are perpendicular. So the arrangement of these three quantities are such that this thumb represent the force, this uh, four finger or index finger represent the direction of magnetic field and this middle finger represent the direction of conventional current. So FBI are the term that are that uh, is the thumb represent the force this uh, index finger represent the magnetic field and our middle finger represent the direction of current. So force, field, and current is the correct answer. So option C is the correct answer for this question number 16. So quickly, let's move to question number 17 and 18. And these are the questions from our chapter number 16, basic electronics. In a logic gate, the total number of truth table entries with a two input circuit. So we have a general formula for the for this uh, total number of uh, uh, possible values of all the variables or the total uh, truth table entries. So total number of logic state is equals to two raised to the power number of inputs. So if we have only one input, then the total number of logic states will be two. If we have uh, two number of inputs, then the number of logic states will be four and so on. For three logic, uh, three number of inputs, the number of logic states will be eight and so on. So for this uh, question number 17, the correct option is option B that if we have two uh, logic inputs, we will get four truth table entries or four number of logic states. Question number 13, uh, 18, again, we have a simple question that uh, which of the following logic gate is used to invert the output or that uh, logic gate is also known as inverter and this inverter has only one input and obviously one output. So the, that inverter is the not gate. So correct option we have for this question is option B. Let's move to next question. That is question number 19. This question number 19 is from our chapter number 17 that is information and communication technology, ICT. When a radio wave is intercepted by an antenna, so what happens to those electromagnetic waves? This, that antenna converts 
those electromagnetic waves that are radio waves into electrical signal. So the correct option for this question number 19 is electrical signal. Question number 20, once again, from the same chapter ICT, to collect information uh, and uh, store it in the computer and retrieve it when it is needed. This all are the steps that are available or that are used in data managing. We collect information for some a for any reason for any purpose, then we can store it in a computer for as long as we can and we can retrieve that information or that data uh, for the any special purpose or any special use. So this all process is known as data managing. So next we have question number 21 and 22. And these two questions are from a last chapter, chapter number 18, radio activity. So in this question, the process of splitting uranium 235 by the bombardment of neutrons in which barium and kryptons are formed. So we have to def uh, identify this definition that the process of splitting of uranium 235 by the bombardment of neutron through which barium-141 in krypton-92 is formed. So this process is known as nuclear fission reaction in which heavy nucleus nuclei is broken down into medium-sized nuclei that are stable and with a hum uh, huge amount of energy is released. So next we have question number 22. If the half-life of an isotope is one day, so the quantity of that isotopes in proportion to the initial quantity after two days. So what is meant by the half-life? So half-life is the amount of time in which that radioactive substance will decay and reduce to one half of the original quantity. This time is known as half-life. So if half-life is one day, so after one day, the initial quantity, let's suppose we have N. So after one day, the quantity will reduce to half. So after another day or after second day, again, this quantity will reduce to half. So overall we have four, the original quantity will reduce by four. So the correct option is option C. Next, we have question number 23, and this question is also from our chapter number 18, radioactivity. We have to identify or see the ionization power of gamma rays. So as we have defined earlier, that ionization is the ability of the radiation when they pass through any medium, they split the atoms of that medium. So this ability is known as gamma rays and we know that the this uh, ionizing ability is greatest for alpha particle because it is uh, it has the more charge among these three radiation and it is more massive than these three so gamma radiation is the least ionizing radiation and the reason for that is these radiations have, these gamma radiation have no charge and they are massless particles. So they are massless radiation and they having no charge. So this is why the ionization ability is least among alpha, beta and gamma. So the correct option we have is less than both alpha and beta particles. So correct option is option C. Let's move to the last two questions for this year, 2016. In question number 24, it is from our chapter number 18, radioactivity, and which of the following reaction is shown in this diagram, in which a neutron is bombarded on a heavy nuclei and two light nuclei are formed with three free electrons or three extra neutrons. With them, there will be a large amount of energy released within this reaction. So 
the reaction given in this diagram is the nuclear fission reaction in which heavy nucleus is split into two medium sized light nuclei with the emission of extra neutrons and a large amount of energy so let's move to our last question of this year which of the following represent the harmful effect on human due to the prolonged uh, prolonged exposure to the nuclear radiation so as we have studied different uh, harmful effects in our slo of this chapter we have described many uh, harmful effects caused by these nuclear radiation among those one of them were the genetic mutation say that if there is a very long exposure to these radiation these harmful radiation these radiation have the ability to enter into our genes and uh, process some changes in our genes that is known as genetic mutation changes in our gene so this was our chapter number this was the last question of this paper from our chapter number 18 and the correct option for this question is option c